When carrying out a heist, timing is one of the most important factors thieves consider. The shorter the time, the more likely the success of the heist. As a result, some of the best million dollar heists were pulled off in seconds. Besides, there's nothing like pulling off a heist and leaving the scene before anyone notices something is off. Today, we'll take a look at some of the craziest thefts in history, including some that happened in a matter of seconds. 1. Bratislava Our first robbery takes us to the lush city of Bratislava, the capital city of Slovakia. In January 2018, the city witnessed a sophisticated ram raid of a posh jewelry store known as Sharon Jewelry Shop. The store was a top-rated jewelry store in Bratislava and a proud partner of the luxury watch brand Rolex. The robbery was so quick that by the time the police and security company guarding the jewelry store arrived at the scene, the perpetrators were already in the wind. At around 5 a.m. on that Monday morning, this dark gray BMW 530 30D arrived at the Sharon jewelry shop. The place was a closed pedestrian zone guarded by retractable bollards, which can only be opened by vehicle owners with access. It was therefore at first a shock how they were able to enter the pedestrian zone with their cars. Well, it was not that tricky. The team of four had earlier used a carbon driver to saw off one of the security barriers that denied them access to the area. The timing was perfect as they couldn't perform such drilling during the day without raising suspicions. The gang of thieves used a BMW with a ram attached to the rear bumper to crash into the jewelry store. This could only mean one thing. The crew knew the best car that would not only serve as a getaway car, but also serve as a weapon to help them penetrate the store's security measures. Although the crash didn't give them a big opening as they probably expected, they managed to get inside the jewelry store through the small opening. As soon as they were inside, they didn't waste time and began to smash the display glass housing the watches. It was as if they already knew what they were looking for and the best way to execute the robbery. The thieves were able to get away with a number of expensive watches and of course, course, Rolex watches as well. Some people even suggested that the thieves were after the Rolex Hot Sports models, a limited edition of Rolex watches at the time reserved for VIP clients. However, neither the police nor the jewelry shop made a comment to the public about the watches stolen during the early morning raid. The best they gave was the estimated value of the stolen watches. Crime experts agreed that the robbery was well-planned, well-coordinated, and executed perfectly. It was also evident that the heist was carried out by a team of professionals. They knew the right car to use and were wise enough to use a stolen car, meaning they targeted the particular model while stealing the car. Another pointer that they knew their onions were triggering the alarm and leaving the area before the authorities who responded quickly could reach the scene. It means they worked with time and knew better than to leave the scene by the time security forces had stormed the jewelry store. The group of thieves left the store with expensive watches valued at around 880,000 euros directly under security cameras. The police also believed that some of the robbers were not naked of the country. They believe the heist could have been orchestrated by foreigners from the Balkans or a Russian-speaking country based on the appearances of the perpetrators. They then released their appearances and their description to the public to help identify, including a suspect whose parts of the face was captured on CCTV. None of the thieves has been apprehended till today. However, there are still chances that they may eventually get caught. This is because stealing Rolex watches is something, getting away and being able to sell them is another. It's hard to sell Rolex watches without papers. They will likely sell it for cheap prices, and there are still chances that the luxury watches can be traced back to them if they attempt to sell it. The serial number on the watches could be used to check if they were reported stolen. However, a gang of thieves that carried out such organized burglary would most likely know the best way to wash off the watches. The thieves were also bold enough to carry a heist on a store at the center of the historic Bratislava. They even broke the popular statue of Kumil, which was directly opposite the storefront, as they managed to access the store with their car. 2. Hatton Garden Our next case takes us to Hatton Garden, the centre of the UK's diamond trade and home to over 300 jewellery businesses. The central London district is regarded as one of the finest and renowned jewellery locations in the world. This list is incomplete without making reference to the great Hatton Garden heist of 2015. The Hatton Garden heist is a historical jewellery theft that was regarded as one of the biggest heists in English legal history, according to the court. The daring heist was well planned and executed by a group of thieves who were surprisingly in their 60s and 70s. It was one of the largest burglaries that has ever taken place within London in recent times. It was meticulously planned over a three-year period. 
unlike most robberies on this list that were carried out in minutes, this robbery was carried out in about four days. The robbery began on an Easter weekend, a time when other jewellery shops across the streets of central London were closed. But instead of robbing a jewellery shop out of the dozens in the area, the criminals felt they'd make more money by robbing a safe deposit company. The robbers seized the Easter bank holiday period to cart away jewellery from over 60, 70 deposit safe boxes from the Hatton Garden Safe Deposit Company, a company that provided secure storage for valuables like jewellery, cash, and many others. It all began on the evening of the long Easter holiday when these two men in high visibility vests entered the Hatton Garden Safe Deposit Company on foot. They could be spotted on CCTV cameras using the fire escape to enter and exit the building as they wished. The gang of thieves was so careful to avoid their faces being captured by the camera, they then used the elevator shaft to access the underground building where the valuables were stored. After gaining access to the building, the thieves used heavy cutting equipment to drill into a thick 50 centimeter concrete wall to access the vault. Once they disarmed the company's security system, they had the next few days to cut through and access dozens of deposit boxes. They were spotted on camera loading two bins full of stolen jewelry in their white delivery car before driving off. The thieves made off with jewelry, cash, and dozens of valuables like diamonds, gold, and other precious gems, with an estimated worth of $20 million. Nobody knew anything about the heist until the workers resumed after the long Easter weekend, only to discover that their secure underground vault had been raided. The gang knew that using their mobile phones to communicate would place them in the area and might lead the police to their doorsteps. As a result, they opted for walkie-talkies to communicate during the weekend heist. However, the police didn't need their phones to track them down, but a simple mistake. While reviewing the CCTV footage, the police noticed a white E200 series Mercedes-Benz parked near the facility. They ran the number plate, and it led them right to John Kenny Collins, a 74-year-old who acted as the gang's driver. The police managed to bug the two cars belonging to Collins and eavesdropped on his conversation with the team. They listened as the gang members talked about the heist, including some things that went wrong. A month after the heist, three out of the four gang members who executed the heist met up at a castle pub in North London where they discussed the robbery. Undercover officers were on the scene and even recorded footage where Perkins could be seen demonstrating how he accessed the vault using a diamond-tipped drill. The police eventually arrested the gang of thieves after they caught the suspects on surveillance transporting some of the stolen valuables. However, even upon the arrest and sentencing of the perpetrators, only a small part of the loot was recovered. They managed to recover a approximately 4.3 million euros worth of valuables out of the total 14 million euros worth of valuables the Hatton Garden robbers had stolen. 3. Brussels Airport Our next heist takes us to Belgium, in what appears to be one of the fastest and biggest diamond heists of all time. The heist I'm about to talk about took place at the Brussels Airport runway in Belgium. The 29 passengers aboard were completely unaware of what was happening until the perpetrators left the scene. And in less than 5 minutes, the perpetrators were out on the street with diamonds worth over $50 million. This might look like a scene from the movie Ocean's Eleven, or a regular blockbuster heist movie, except that the robbery happened in real life, and the majority of the robbers are still at large. In February 2013, eight heavily armed men drove into the Brussels International Airport, flashed their guns, and made off with diamonds worth over $50 million. The gang of thieves cut a hole in the fence at Brussels Airport and drove towards the plane dressed as police officers. They also drove black vans with flashing blue police lights, which helped maintain their cover as they approached the plane which was bound for Zurich. The window of opportunity was very small, as the moment between the loading procedure and plane takeoff was just 15 minutes. However, the thieves were lucky to arrive just as the exchange was about to take place. This perfect timing is an indicator that they knew about the time. The offloading would be taking place. The robbery definitely was an inside job. The gang knew where exactly to go when they stormed the airport and held three people at gunpoint. The burglars stopped the plane while brandishing their guns to scare the pilot and airport security. However, they didn't hurt anyone as they drove off the airport with 130 loaded bags. They left a few diamonds behind as they fled the scene in a hurry. Here's the most impressive thing about the robbery. The actual robbery took just 180 seconds and the million dollar heist was achieved without firing a single shot. The van the perpetrators used during the robbery was later discovered abandoned and burned. To show how successful the heist was, the passengers aboard the plane didn't figure anything was wrong until the flight was cancelled and they were told to exit the plane. The police believed that the heist was an inside job. It was not only professional and well coordinated, the thieves seemed to know about the transfer procedures and timing. Three months after the robbery, the police made dozens of arrests in connection to the case after suspects tried to sell the stolen gems. Around that time, 
Pascal Pont, a Swiss real estate agent, received a large sack of diamonds from his friend Bertoldi, who sells luxury cars. Bertoldi became a prime suspect in the robbery. His car was also around the vicinity of the robbery. During a trial in 2017, the luxury car dealer pleaded guilty to receiving stolen diamonds, but maintained that he had no involvement with the million-dollar heist. He was eventually sentenced to five years behind bars. It's been over 10 years since the incident, and only one suspect has been put behind bars. The only suspect behind bars was punished for being a co-conspirator. The tribunal did not consider Bertoldi as the mastermind behind the attack. In other words, the real faces behind the robbery are still at large. Although the authorities at several points thought they were closer to tracking down the masterminds behind the iconic heist, the suspects are still at large. They even executed an operation across three countries in the quest to capture the masterminds behind the heist. The operation was successful as they were able to recover some of the diamonds. However, that was the best they achieved. Like the Hatton Garden heist, only a small portion of the Brussels airport heist has been recovered, and it seems the rest of the loot would never be found. 4. Birmingham Our next robbery happened in the city of Birmingham, the city of a thousand trades. Unlike other robberies on this list that occurred late at night or during a time with less movement, this daring burglary occurred in broad daylight on a busy street. The perpetrators stole jewellery and other valuables worth about 300,000 euros in just 70 seconds. The audacious robbery happened in the middle of the day after two cars blocked off both sides of the road leading to a jewellery store. A third Toyota Hilux, which later turned out to be stolen, was used to crash into Dun jewelers in Sparkbrook, nearly injuring a staff member. Five men armed with sledgehammers stormed the jewelry store, smashing their way into the two display cabinets. The heist appeared to be well planned. One of the thieves remained in the car. He was probably stationed as their exfil plan, as the other three were inside carrying out the heist. A fifth man also was stationed just outside the store to scare the crowd as he waved his axe at the witnesses. The three armed men could be spotted on CCTV stashing stolen jewelry in bags, and in less than 70 seconds, they were out of the store. The robbers escaped the scene in the stolen Hilux and a Rover, abandoning a third car at the crime scene. Concerned witnesses tried to capture the number plate of the cars, however, it came back cold when the police tried tracking it. Aside from using stolen cars to carry out the heist, the thieves ensured that the number plates on each of the vehicles were fake. The burglars made off with up to 5 kilograms of 22 karat gold jewellery. The total worth of jewellery carted during the raid was valued at about 300,000 euros. Witnesses were also able to record some videos of the perpetrators, which were helpful during the investigations. Although the heist was a success, the suspects were eventually apprehended after one of them attempted to sell parts of the stolen goods just a few hours after the loot. On the evening of the robbery, John Gourlay, the gang ringleader, drove to the city's jewellery quarter to sell one of the stolen and gems, a gold bangle, and attempted to sell it at the store for 1,500 euros. The ringleader smiled as he walked out of the store with the money. However, despite this clever move, some little mistakes on his end gave him away. The 49-year-old didn't bother to change his clothes. He wore the same clothes he used to commit the robbery when selling the stolen goods. He also didn't wait till things cooled off before selling the valuables. The police were able to connect him with the heist after his fingerprints were found on the sales sheet. It took the police a few days to link him to the robbery and make an arrest. The remaining four members of the team who carried out the heist Boyland, Zulfika, Leek, and Croft were eventually identified and charged in court. Gourley admitted to stealing the Hilux car and driving to the jewelry quarter to sell parts of the stolen jewelry. Zulfair, another member of the crew, was spotted on surveillance camera driving the Audi and buying adhesive pads at an auto parts store in Birmingham, which were used in fixing the fake number plates on the stolen vehicles. When the police hit Boylan's apartment after the robbery, they discovered tags from the stolen jewelry on his sofa. After a four-week trial at the Birmingham Crown Court, the Daniel jewelry store robbers were given a combined sentence of 72 years. 5. Laverne our next robbery takes us to the city of Laverne in California, where a coordinated gang of thieves raided a jewelry store during a weekend. Like the previous heist we just looked into, this audacious raid was carried out in the afternoon, right in the presence of the store owners. The jewelry store was owned by a family, and some family members were unfortunate to witness the event. In July 2023, this team of thieves rammed a white sedan into the storefront of a popular jewelry store called Rodeo Jewelers. At first, it appeared like a car crash. I believe everyone in the store probably thought a car across the street had crashed 
smashed into the building until four men dressed in all black with their faces covered alighted from the car sending glass cabinets flying and stashing jewelry into bags. It looked like a movie scene when the four guys jumped out of the car, shattered display cases, and began to toss jewelry into their bags. One of the perpetrators could be seen on CCTV, assaulting a store employee with a chair, while the rest of the group focused on grabbing as much jewelry as they could. This MO is common among robbers, especially when hitting jewelry stores. They station someone to act as a guard, so the rest can carry out their operations undisturbed. The guard would keep the witnesses in place and be on the lookout for any danger. In the blink of an eye, the robbers had taken enough and were out of the jewelry store. The robbery was one of the fastest robberies as it took less than 60 seconds. They abandoned the white sedan that they used to ram into the store and fled in a second getaway car, which was probably parked near the store before the raid. The robbers left the store with bags of jewelry valued at around $300,000. The store employee who managed to have a face-off with the thieves got injured, but it was not life-threatening. He recovered after taking seven stitches to the head. The police believe the brazen daylight robbery might be connected to a similar event that happened near the store just some days before the jewelry store got hit. Two days before the jewelry store got raided, a nearby store experienced a similar smash-and-grab robbery at Diamond Center in Claremont. The suspects wore ski masks, gloves, and hooded shirts, the same as the rodeo jeweler robbers. The police believed the team that attacked Diamond Center had become more brazen and was behind the attack on the family-owned business. They offered a reward of $20,000 for any member of the public who could provide information that could lead to the identification of the suspects. However, there has not been a major breakthrough, and the robbers are still at large, probably on a beach out of the country enjoying the proceeds of the loot. As coordinated as the robbery may seem, the robbers didn't appear to be armed with any primary weapon except hammers. This has raised questions on how a jewelry store in a city like California doesn't have a firearm to protect themselves against incidents like these. It also appears that the robbers were aware that the store had lax security measures and exploited that when ransacking the store. Investigators are now looking for the nexus between the two robberies, hoping to crack down on the gang of thieves before they attempt to stage another raid. As things stand, the burglars who made away with merchandise worth over $300 million from the rodeo jeweler store in Laverne are still in the wind, and the longer it takes to identify the culprits, the less likely the chances of ever recovering the stolen jewelry. 6. Antwerp Diamond Heist Our next heist takes us back to Belgium in what was dubbed the heist of the century. The Antwerp Diamond Heist remains one of the largest robberies in history and is still considered the largest ever diamond heist. The robbery took 18 months to plan and the target was a heavily guarded and monitored vault that housed diamonds in the Antwerp World Diamond Center. Leonard Notarbartolo, the mastermind behind the iconic heist, had earlier rented an office space at the Antwerp World Diamond Center 28 months before the robbery for around 700 bucks per month. Month. Owning an office space at one of the city's largest buildings gave him 24-hour access to the facility and made him eligible to rent a safe deposit box. This technique was first used by Vojislav Stanimirovich, infamous for his lead role in the Vizkai heist and his affiliation with YACS and the Pink Panthers, among other gangs of thieves. Leonardo disguised as an Italian gem importer and made himself known to almost everyone working in the building. He led a gang of Italian criminals known as the School of Turin to infiltrate one of the most secure vaults in the world. The team featured four other members to whom Leonardo assigned a nickname, just like the professor did in the Spanish crime drama series, Money Heist. The team included a nerd called Speedy, a friend of Leonardo, the monster, an expert locksmith, the genius, an alarm system specialist who disabled the vault's alarms, and the king of keys, who is described as one of the best key forgers in the world. Each time Leonardo visited the safe deposit box, he'd use a pen camera to record through a tiny hole in his bag. This way, he was able to get classified security information of the facility, including the vault he intended to break into. Posing as a diamond merchant who frequents the secure vault, the guards became more familiar with his friendly face, and as a result, they went easy on him with the security procedures. The group managed to hide their security camera over the combination dial of the vault's door. That way, they were able to monitor the guards opening the door and take notes of the combinations being used to access the vault. The small camera was hidden and almost invisible when the lights were on. A day before the heist, Leonardo visited the vault as usual, but this time, he did something strange. The criminal mastermind sprayed women hairspray on the thermal motion sensors, which temporarily disabled the vault's heat and motion sensor. This hack was a temporary one though, but it bought them enough time to figure out how they could disable the security systems permanently. This was captured on camera, and the room was momentarily filled with the smell from the women's hairspray, but the security operatives, who were familiar with the Italian's frequent visits, didn't pay attention. Another wise move the Italian criminal played was staging the heist over the weekend of February 15th, 16, 2003, which coincided 
with the long Valentine's Day weekend. The timing was meticulously planned, as the area would be less populated during the holiday. The King of Keys forged a key and granted Italian thieves access to the building through an abandoned office that was adjacent to the Diamond Center to avoid the swarm of CCTV cameras in the vicinity. Once they were inside, the genius disabled all the facility's sensors and security measures. The King of Keys, on the other hand, stole the original vault key, although he had created a replica. They managed to access the vault and stole gold, diamonds, both raw and cut ones, and other precious stones. The precious gems and valuables looted from the vault were valued at over $100 million, making the heist the largest diamond heist ever. Leonardo was found guilty of planning the heist and was sentenced to 10 years behind bars. He was re-arrested in 2013 and was eventually released in 2017. Speedy, the monster, and the genius were given five years each. However, the King of Keys was never identified and remained the only member of the crew that was not apprehended. Despite the arrest of the culprits, most of the stolen diamonds were never recovered to date. 7. Dunbar Armored Robbery our next robbery takes us back to downtown Los Angeles in what appeared to be not only one of the smartest heists ever, but also one of the largest money heists in history. The robbery was so smart that it took the authorities several years to identify the robbers. They set up a special task force that featured as many as 15 investigators under the code name Operation Dunrob to investigate the robbery. As successful as the heist was, one bit of evidence the perpetrators left behind was all the authorities needed to bust the whole gang. In September 1997, a group of criminals led by Alan Pace robbed the Dunbar Armored Facility, a security firm that moved and processed cash and other valuables. The company is entrusted with a large sum of money from several clients to keep in their secured facility and transport using their armored vehicles. The mastermind behind the robbery, Alan Pace, worked at the facility and gave the gang of criminals all they needed to invade the company. A day before the robbery, Pace was relieved of his duty for tampering with the company's vehicle. This probably gave the former regional safety inspector more reasons to carry out the iconic heist. To establish to establish an alibi, the team of six met at a house party. They sneaked out of the house party, changed their clothes, and drove to the facility. Since Pace had a good idea of how the security cameras worked, the team was able to enter the facility unnoticed. His insider knowledge also helped the team take on the security personnel one after the other till they were all duct taped. Although they were armed with guns, they didn't fire a single shot and ensured that none of the employees was able to trigger any alarm. Here is where it gets interesting. The team of robbers loaded $18.9 million in a U-truck in just 30 minutes. This feat can only be achieved by a team of professionals. Since Pace knew the bags that contained higher denominations, the team went for those and ignored the rest. He also ensured that they packed non-sequential bills so they couldn't be traced back to them. As they were leaving, Pace went to where the recording devices for the security cameras were stationed and took them. They fled the scene and went back to the party. The authorities figured the job was an inside job. There were too many pointers. However, they couldn't link it to Pace, even though he was recently fired. Unfortunately, as the culprits hurriedly fled the scene, they left a matching plan plastic taillight lens that belonged to a U-Haul truck. To launder that much money without raising suspicion was a whole lot of work. As a result, the team waited for six months before they began to launder the stolen millions. They paid an immigration lawyer, David Matsumoto, a million dollars each time he helped them wash the money. Matsumoto, in return, structured transactions and wrote checks for the thieves to make it appear that they were earning wages. Pace also created several front companies he used to launder his money. However, things took a new turn when Bill, one of the perpetrators, mistakenly paid his real estate broker friend with a stack of cash with the original branded currency straps. The suspicious broker thought it was best to report to the police, and that was how the team got busted. The police also found out that Hill rented a U-Haul truck on the day the incident happened. Upon arrest, Hill gave up the names of the remaining crew members. However, only about $5 million was recovered out of the nearly $20 million stolen during the loot. 8. Park Avenue our last robbery took place at Park Avenue, home to some of New York City's most iconic landmarks. It was probably the fastest amount of money a thief could possibly make as they accumulated half a million dollars in less than 60 seconds. In October 2022, a trio of robbers targeted the Cellini Jewelers, a store in Midtown Manhattan. The brand was a popular store that dealt with fine and rare jewelry and watches. According to crime statistics, the rates of burglaries in the area at the time had increased by over 10% when compared to the previous year. The robbers made a dramatic entry into the business, which was closed for the night. The team of three stormed the jewelry store at around 3.30 a.m. wielding sledgehammers. They smashed the doors with their sledgehammers and managed to enter the building, almost without much effort. They breached the two supposed security glasses to access the Celine's interior. The three burglars wore black hoodies, masks to hide their identities, and gloves to ensure they didn't leave a fingerprint behind at the crime scene. Without wasting time, they got into action and began to smash display cases in which they emptied their content into their bags. They stole gold, diamonds, watches, 
almost anything they could lay their hands on during the brief raid. In less than 60 seconds, they were done with the raid and could be seen on CCTV running on foot to a grey or silver sedan which served as their getaway car. Even though the store was yet to provide the full inventory of the valuable missing, the police revealed that the gang of thieves had made off with merchandise worth more than $500,000, promising rewards up to $3,500 for members of the public who could help identify them. The prices of the stolen merchandise don't come as a surprise, since the store houses a number of high-priced baubles. According to the store's official website, they had in stock expensive merchandise like the diamond petal earrings that sell for $12,000, the paved diamond oval and bar yellow diamond gold cuff bracelet that goes for $17,600, and the Girard Perigo Tourbillon watch, which costs around $172,000. These expensive items are believed to have been looted during the early morning raid, although this was not confirmed by the jewelry store. The police, since the incident, have not made any arrests in connection to the robbery. It means the culprits were never identified, and the jewelry worth over half a million dollars may never be recovered. I don't know if you noticed as well, but most times, proceeds from robberies are usually not fully recovered, even when the culprits get caught. If you enjoyed this video, you ought to click on the next video showing on your screen right now.